<laughs> here I am. Here we are. Yes. Another week. It's the disrespect for me. Disrespect. What it means to me. Come out. What you want to see? Do you want it? I don't want it. You're asking for it. You're dying for it. No, no, what now? Be, be so drama, I can attest. Children the girls that are permit to press. Arms for what everyone can be. Sister girl, it's a burden. Peace for Papa, I keep it tease everywhere. Mariah carry me. Papa took me and that just ain't no tea. Relax. The D, the I, the S, the R, the E, the S, the B, the E, the C, C, C. You see, it ain't no tea. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to another week of the Disrespect Podcast. And coming to you live is none other than your favorite HR coordinator, Miss Cleo or Diane Ford, and my lovely, lovely co-host, White. Welcome back, Hi. White. Hi. <laughs> it's a me. It's a it's a me. Girl, this was a heck of a week. Like honestly, the drama. Mm. Let's start with our Glenn Coco, you go, Glenn Coco. Miss Wendy Williams, Glenda Coco. I'm sorry, Glenda. How you doing, Miss Wendy? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Come on, stop. How you doing? 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 I I remember um when Wendy Williams first really like blew up on the tv scene because we know she's been out since back in the day like arguing with legends like whitney houston whitney 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 wendy 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 oh my gosh oh my lord have i waited for this day have you well yes i have haven't you whitney yes dear absolutely i know it <laughs> getting ran down on <laughs> by former girl 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 groups for one time, I said something about Puffy's R&B group Total on the radio. Do you right. know the girl I'm talking about from Total? Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, when, when I heard she was with Missy, I said, she's not committed to that. She's just <laughs> going for the paycheck. I guess they didn't like it. He didn't like it. Most people don't like it, but they're very entertained. I respect your hustle. Why don't you respect mine? Camera A and B, take one, Mark. Wendy was always saying stuff about us. It just seemed like she just had she had it out for us. Like, how are you up here saying, total some broke bitches, we grew up in the projects, never grew up in the projects. So I was like, yeah, I want to go Wendy up. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody opposed. You know, Diddy didn't send us up there. I remember I got off the air one day, and them, them total bitches were downstairs waiting, and everybody upstairs at the radio station is looking down, egging it on, waiting for something to go down. Nobody put you on? No! That's what I'm saying. They're all pressed up against the window, looking down. As soon as I opened the door, th there was a van outside. Keisha, Kima, and Pam from Total jump out, boom, hit the sidewalk, and try to rush me. They were going to kick my ass. There was no security or anything. It was just them three fighting broads and me. Wendy was scared as hell. My brother taught me karate, so it's just like, you know, I, size don't mean nothing. We hopped out the car and was, like, trying to get at her like that. Out of nowhere, my knight in shining armor screeched up in his car. Didn't even know. I didn't even know what was about to happen. Next thing I know, he's out of the car, and uh, there's a whole bunch of rah-rah going on outside, and I'm still trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Kevin protected her. We were like, all right, she with her man. She gets in her Mercedes. She rolls the sunroof open, and she sticks her middle finger out the sunroof. And we like, oh, Wendy, you a punk ass. Like, you know, we just found that to be so funny. And that, I mean, and that was the end of it. It's not even like he, he knew. I just, it was just, like, weird. Another sign to say that this is the one for me. Mm. She's the moment. She's an icon. And Wendy, that's Wendy's moment. She's got a point. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Yeah. Now, come on now. Now, yeah. come on now. <laughs> Wendy, okay, yes, we're here to give Wendy her flowers, Miss Glenda. Wendy started off in, you know, like radio beforehand and was thriving. She's always been that girl. She's always been bubbly. Um, she's always been good at 
being with people and then another thing is is wendy had that bit of an edge that when we grew up when we grew up why we didn't too much know her from radio wendy we recognized her from oh, wendy so you know we got to see the round the way girl but also her being not like ratchet but just real like just let's just be honest like wendy is real and wendy was going to ask the questions that some other people were going to be scared to ask and i think that's what also made her so near and dear because wendy was not gonna play that bs when you came and sat down when she was in her nice comfy chair i know and that attitude i think was her (laughs) initial downfall um in like the public eye i really want to shift over to the disrespects because it's about to get messy my glass is stuck in my wig it was not a smooth transition as i thought it was gonna be it's okay just run it back and then bring it back right there it's okay (laughs) (laughs) um let me do a let me do a touch on the extents the disrespects oh no it looked a little lopsided hold on hold on hold on hold on oh lord I can't have the girls looking lopsided. That's that's crazy. All right. Really? Why y'all acting like that? You see why y'all act like that? You see why nobody want to be around y'all? That shit pissed me off for real. Why do you act like that? Like what? The way that you act. You don't you don't see how you act why people don't want to be around you? No. Look how you act. The disrespect has been real about Wendy Williams. I think because she was so vocal and just non-apologetic about how she was on the show that a lot of people just really hated on her when she started to go through her divorce and when her mental health and her physical health started to really decline. I feel like initially the public just was not feeling sorry for her. They were saying karma, karma, karma. Yeah, I agree. I'm I'm not even going to sit here and be a hypocrite and act holier than thou because I didn't, Wendy wasn't my go-to girl as far as like keeping, watching her show very often, but you couldn't help but to see Wendy. Like you get what I'm saying? So on one end, I understand not people, I don't know if it's really like saying karma, 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 but it's almost saying like, you can't expect people to be not in your business the way you're in people's business. And you can't expect people not to commentate on what you got going on when that's what you do for a living and what what everybody else got going on. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it was warranted. Lady was just doing her job. I don't know if Wendy was really nasty. And people did get a little nasty with her. Uh, following like you said her divorce and you know health decline and you know we saw the Halloween thing and that was really like a a laughing moment for people when that happened yeah people was not taking that serious at all not at all not at all yeah the memes that came from that was ridiculous I mean Wendy Williams like I said she um I feel like she put herself in a place to where she was just very open to receiving criticism because she was so like crazy on her show. I just remember some of the moments where she was like wishing death upon people and she was like- Is that where that like death to her comes from? That TikTok sound when it's like death to her or like something? No, it's like shame on you, Mr. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Spears. Cause she was talking about Britney Spears' parents for for their conservatorship. Oh, yeah. And that's another conservatorship that we gonna come back and double back on them, but. Mr. Spears, you had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears, death to all of them. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, because she was just so vocal, I think people just started to recently care now that they're seeing the whole story and how Wendy is in this conservatorship. So I don't know if you saw the whole series, but there's a Wendy Williams documentary called Where's Wendy? And it really highlights the decline of her like mental and physical health, along with her being placed in a um, state conservatorship. 
Now, from what I have seen on the documentary, Wendy initially was with her family down in Florida, and they were doing a good job of taking care of her after the divorce and after she found out she had um, that autoimmune disease. Are we ready? Yeah, we're waiting on you. All right, and away we go. Love you, Wendy. All I know is how to be famous. I really want to be back on television. You're going to be back on TV. That's yep. easy. My mom has done a great job making it seem like everything is okay always. Wendy, make sure you look here. One, two, yep. three. But in reality, there's something wrong going on. Did you see a neurologist to find out if I'm crazy? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. I have to sit down again. She was put in front of a judge and given a guardian. That was when they took her away from us. I have no money. And I'm gonna tell you something. If it happens to me, it could happen to you. As her family, we were all sitting on the sidelines watching, and she was crying out for help. Did you drink this whole thing today? Keep it there. OK. Keep it there. My mom, she always talks about how she wants to work. But I feel as though she's worked enough. She has people around who are yes people and allowing this to continue. Right? This is all too much. Go, fly. I have no idea where we are. This doesn't look like anything familiar. I think she's losing memory. Have you guys noticed that? How dare him? I control men. I weigh 138. Anybody could look at her and tell this is not just alcohol. There's something more going on. No matter how many times somebody may fall down, you got to lift them back up. We all make choices in life. We all go through our challenges. She's still a person. How you doing? That's my sister. There have been random people around you stealing money from me, getting money, whatever the case may be. Enough. Can you tell me where your sister is? No, I don't know the exact location of where she is. I feel like the Guardian has not done a good job of protecting my mom. My life. My life. Right now, she's weak and vulnerable, and she needs to be around people who aren't going to take advantage of that. I have no friends. You know how many people come out to support you? You know how many people love you? No, I don't. Everything is going to be good. I know. I think that the guardianship system is broken. We are her family. And you tell me that I'm not capable of taking care of my sister. What would you do? What should I do? I love being famous. But family is everything. So good to see you again, Dad. It's good to see you, babe. Everything. I think she was actually sent back to New York because I'm not even sure if the network she works with forced her to come back or if she came back on her own like volition. But either way, now she's in New York under this conservatorship. And the documentary really does a good job of pointing out how she's not being well taken care of. Okay, I'll stay here. Please be here. I'll be here. I miss my family. <laughs> her life is falling into shambles. She has a lot of people around her that don't have her best interests. And it's just really sad to see. How was it that the court was involved? She has a guardian that's supposed to be managing her day to day, her finances, all of that. How was all of that happening in Wendy's life just fell through the cracks? I'm gonna be honest because I'm a mommy's girl. So this really tugged at my heartstrings. I was very emotional during most parts because like you said white they were her, she was in florida with her family i think they said it was like in 2021 and then in 2022 of like april it was like a court mandate that she must come back to new york where the show was being produced at and i remember her son wendy's son explaining how you know, her decision or the decision to bring Wendy down to Florida was like a co-decision between the family and the network or producers of the show, essentially. And when they realized that 
the family wasn't going to just do like maybe like an easy band-aid quick fix and send Wendy back up there started to be a division in between the family and the show and I don't know if the show somehow is what was responsible for her having to be mandated to go back to New York but for me it just feels very likely you know that we become at odds and then all of a sudden the following year the court is mandating her to come back to new york and if it was my mother okay and this is that to no critique of any family member of wendy williams because they are trying to do the best that they could do and what they can do my mother i already told my mother this today <laughs> and she will see it again when she watches this show a wall they finna have to come find us sister girl they finna have to come back and get it out the mud bitch come get your lick back get out your feelings and get in the field because that's where you finna have to go to find me and my mama me and my mama will be in sweden somewhere i i mean i don't know where i'm taking her but trust and believe you're gonna have to work for that one they was gonna really have to work to get my mama i think they did a good job um putting out the film and having the court of public opinion because the court of public opinion will rock the actual like U.S. courts, like they would drag and actually get people moving and doing their job. So I'm glad they exposed them. I hope that um Wendy receives the help she needs because we've just seen time after time how these conservatorships can destroy people's lives and their finances. Like Wendy said that she had lost access to millions of dollars and i'm not sure how true that is but like i said this has happened time and time again today i want to talk about a controversial topic my conservatorship case i have been going to a treatment center that charges 5200 a month there's no reason why i shouldn't go to a therapist who takes my insurance for five thousand dollars less a month this is why i've asked to see the judge next week regarding this conservatorship issue Thank you guys so much for hearing me out. I'm sorry that this is what I'm dealing with and I'm sorry to put my problems onto the internet, but this is what life has come to. With this whole Michael Orr conservatorship, I think the judge just ruled in his favor that they were gonna end his conservatorship. In the case involving the family that inspired the Oscar nominated movie, The Blind Side, a Tennessee judge said today she is ending a conservatorship agreement between former NFL player Michael Orr and the couple who took him in when he was in high school. It's so interesting because I did a little research on him and his conservatorship. Just, you know, Wendy Williams really dropping this documentary alongside whomever she worked with kind of opened everybody's eyes. You mentioned Brittany earlier. I'm sure we'll get back to her. But I know for Wendy, you know, the state felt like somebody may have been using her money and that's what got everything started unlike in michael's case it was first like reported that he got into the conservatorship the family that you know put him in the conservatorship that was helping him when he turned 18 put him in that in order to help him go to college help him get a driver's license i mean just certain things that he would need to do and you know, there's been the big uproar that has come out because you said the judge just ruled with him about us, the public, finding out. And Michael kind of finding out as well is that the papers that he signed were for a conservatorship and not for an adoption, which is what he had assumed for upwards of a decade plus. So then you have people trying to shoot you know the family some bail because they've made a lot of good money in the restaurant industry and the restaurant business a couple hundred million dollars and you would think well why would they need to take money from michael like why would they you know why would that amount but you have attorneys out of tennessee i believe this is where all this is taking place or I'm wondering why would this family want to take money from Michael? You know, they were known for being in the restaurant industry, making hundreds of millions of dollars. I think it was reported that the father of that family may have sold his business for like 220 million. So you say, 
you know, why would they need, how much money could Michael have really grossed that they would steal from him? Well, one, before I even get in a little bit further, let me tell you something. Greedy motherfuckers is greedy, okay? Greedy people is greedy. <laughs> Y'all don't be asking people why they go back and want to eat your chips after they ate their chips. Like, you know what I'm saying? Greedy people is greedy. So having a bunch of money to me does not mean that you can't want some more. What does that mean? Like, we live in a capitalistic country. Like, we... Greed? Greed? You girls smile like y'all don't understand greed? I digress. Anyways. Well, these attorneys that are out of Tennessee, which is where I think all of this is occurring, who specialize, I think, in um, like conservatorships and guardianships, are just kind of baffled that Michael was even able to be placed into this conservatorship because there needs to be some sign of like disability, you know, lack of awareness, lack of capability, and he had none of those, as well to the fact that the family's defense was they did this in order to help Michael do these things. This was the only way, but apparently adult adoptions are legal in the state of Tennessee. So, girl. Oh, are they? What's what? What's really what? Because you could have adopted him then. So I'm just trying to understand why mm. get his his money. It's 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 really crazy that uh you have somebody like we said, like Wendy Williams, who is clearly dealing with something um mental health wise and may or may not need to have been placed into a conservatorship, but then you get into the whole like third party place conservatorship all the way over to how that varies with Michael and his situation with being placed in a conservatorship without lacking some type of like you know mental awareness and that's scary yeah. and Michael doesn't even have anything mentally wrong with him like I'm pretty sure the courts determined that there was no reason he should have ever been placed under that conservatorship so it's just very strange that the state keeps overriding common sense. It feels like they're being paid off or something, allegedly. Let me say that. But um, I don't know. Even for Britney Spears, it's very strange. Like, it was always a weird vibe around why she was in that conservatorship. Okay. So Britney had the shaving her hair and um, hitting the car with the umbrella. Okay, I'm not nobody's doctor, so I'm not going to sit here and try to act like, you know what I'm saying? I know, but I'm not, you know what? No, nah, bump that. I'm not even going to sit here and, you know, sit here with my back all straight and propped up and, and act. So if <clears throat> I was trying to scam, if I was trying to finesse, I would use an instance like Britney shaving all her hair off and hitting the umbrella in the car and stuff as a reason to go to the courts to say um my good honey bun has lost it and i need to have my um hands in all the pots to make sure that she don't burn the kitchen down type of vibe the problem is is that some of these conservatorships are lasting i think like in michael's case like 20 plus years britney's case was a very long time and there doesn't seem to be any type of like evaluation or ask you know like of the person who's in the conservatorship there doesn't seem to be a lot of oversight with the people who are now running this person's financials like what they're doing having to report it just kind of seems almost like you get this conservatorship over somebody and they're just like hey responsibilities and we expect <laughs> you to follow through tommy <laughs> Yeah, it's very strange that, um, I don't know, it's just always a money grab. It seems like, but you know, I'm not going to say that because from according to the Wendy Williams documentary, they say that these conservatorships happen all the time, like even with people that are not famous. So I don't know, it's, it's weird. It reminds me of that movie where they were taking advantage of them old people and scamming them. And I just feel like, the government is failing its citizens. Like, you should be well assured that if anything was to happen to your mental health or your physical health, that, you know, 
your family and the government will have your best interests in mind and will be able to handle your assets accordingly. It's just a lot of shady situations like with, I don't know. I feel like for Wendy, it was shady with the government and her family was like in good standing from what I saw. With the case of Michael, it seemed like the government was more on his side than his family, our quote unquote, you know, the Tui family. I feel like they say they had his best interest in mind, but it just seems very suspicious. So I'm going to side with the courts for him. And in Brittany's case, I don't know if I trust the government or the family. Like, I don't think anybody had Brittany's best interest in mind. Even though she cut her hair off, she wrote in her memoir that that was for a reason. Like, she was going to be drug tested and they were going to use her hair as a sample. So she cut it all off because she didn't want to lose her kids. But we didn't know that. We just knew that Brittany cut all her hair off and the paparazzi got pics of her with an umbrella, you know, lunging forward. I think the main thing I do remember when it was started was my dad's control. He loved to control everything I did. I remember the first day he said, I'm Britney Spears and I'm calling the shots. And I'm like, alrighty then. Um, all I do remember is I had to do what I was told. Um, I was told I was fat every day. I had to go to the gym. I had to just, and um, I never remember feeling so demoralized and just they made me feel like nothing and i went along with it because i was scared i was scared and fearful i didn't even really do anything i couldn't go where i wanted to go i couldn't have the nannies that i wanted to have i couldn't have cash um and it was just demoralizing so i was kind of like in this conspiracy thing of people claiming and like treating me like a superstar but yet they treated me like nothing. The main thing I, I, to this day, I kind of stopped believing in God at that time because I didn't know how they could have 40 people leave my house a day and me work from eight to six at night. Be seen changed every time I changed in the shower, no privacy, no door, nothing. How did they get away with it? And what the f did I do to deserve that? I feel like the scare tactic and how badly they treated me in the end I think they thought I was going to come begging back to work again because I was they thought you know I needed them um because they they did they put me in an ignorant scared state of mind to make me feel like I needed them and if you don't um do what we say we're going to show you who's boss I didn't play their game anymore I got on my knees every day and I prayed I held on like a needle and thread to some sort of existence because they had made me feel like nothing for so long. I knew in the deepest, deepest part of my core, I knew I'd done nothing wrong and I didn't deserve the way I'd been treated. I honestly deserve an award for acting like I was okay every day. I thought they were trying to kill me. So I don't know. I, um... These days, I see Britney doing a lot of twirling and swirling on social media. She's always naked. I don't know if she's just expressing her liberty or uh, her freedom or if she is really, like, needing some more help. Like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I wish these people all just had better friends. Like, where are, where are all of their friends at? your friend listen speaking of friends <clears throat> little left field but not really this is slightly how i feel about Nicki minaj and before <laughs> you girls start because i know oh, y'all like to tussle i know y'all like to tussle baby you're not fighting auntie okay like i said fight fight meet me in the comments baby meet me in the comments that's where you can find me um Nikki. I'm not saying that Nikki is giving signs to a conservatorship. This is not where the lines are drawn. But just like you said, touching on some of these conservatorships that we were talking about and how some of these people seem like, you know, they're 
having this person's best interest at heart or whatever and these are supposed to be people that are close to said individual but yet are participating in you know the withholding or whatever it makes you just wonder if having yes men or having your friends on your payroll where is everybody who's keeping it real because like nikki with the diss track yeah. I love Nikki. Nikki <laughs> does it for me. If it was me, you know, I said, friend, you you was always going to eat her up, but you kind of chewing still. You kind of chewing still. And it's okay to take a little bit of time and really chew so you can, like, swallow so you don't choke. Like, I just needed her to do a little bit more, but it seems like if you don't have a group of real friends that's also in tune with reality right what kind of reality can you live in really how out of touch do you start to become because the people around you benefit off of your success and unfortunately like right now the saying has always been you know any publicity is good publicity you know, so I don't really think they're trying to clean you up to do whatever, because just like how you could be in the media for good stuff, we know the internet loves the messy shit. We know the internet loves ratchet and, and, you know, back and forth drama. So why would they stop you from doing crazy shit? And I don't want the barbs. And I don't want want the barbs to come for you because we can't pretend that Nicki Minaj's mental health was not a high topic of conversation during this whole Bigfoot era or whatever like that was something that a lot of people were speculating and like you said if you have a toxic circle around you that doesn't check you then it could come off as you having like mental issues or being out of touch with reality like delusion so high that you seem like mentally ill and we're not making fun of this but we're just talking about public perception because at the end of the day, as a public figure and a celebrity, the public perception does matter. And you could say it doesn't and it might not affect your pride, but what it affects is your career as a rapper. You have to have the public on your side. Are you going to have a situation like Chris Brown? You know, I love Chris Brown, but it's like once you lose the public, it's very hard for you to have a mainstream career you'll always be like that one step under what you could have been and it's sad because there are people that are mentally unstable like wendy williams who was suffering and i'm seeing that she actually went and um saw a treatment at the end of the documentary so i pray that she is better but even with like michael Orr, who was not mentally ill or Britney Spears, who we're not sure what's going on with her. It's like all of these people need better friends because their circles are all toxic. Wendy Williams had this girl watching her drink alcohol, knowing that she has alcohol-induced dementia. Or maybe she didn't know because she said she didn't even ever talk to any of her medical team, any of her doctors. Fuck that. Okay, y'all know, hold on, let me put Diane on. <clears throat> Disregard that because mama is a publicist. I work HR. You see why we're thriving here? You're outside of HR. You see why we're thriving here? Because we know the inner workings and the outer workings, right? I'm gonna t- I'm gonna lock into my corporate baddies right now. Anybody who's ever had to CC or BCC a bitch, okay? Lock in with me the fuck right now, okay? If you worked any admin place, if you ever had a whole paper clips. By the handful, folders, manila, directives. You saw when that lady said, I've never spoken to her medical team. I've never, I've never had a need. <laughs> you got eyes? You got eyes, mama? You got eyes? They work, mama? You working, so they got to work, mama. So what, what the fuck is you talking about? It don't, and this is no Sade. Like, we, the our community, 
us like we know when something's not right don't don't piss on me and tell me that it's raining sister girl you knew <laughs> something was going on this is not the same Wendy. I'm not asking you to give a diagnosis, but what I'm asking you to do is not be full of bullshit. Okay, girl? And that's one thing. I, if you want to be a scamming bitch, that's what you can do. But just know, don't sit in front of us and the rest of America and Wendy's family and say, I've never talked to her medical team. Because why wouldn't you? And then why would you say... Ooh, uh -uh. why would you say why would you say that she's on the bounce back when she said she was on the bounce back i went to bounce on her what are you talking about what what wendy or what <laughs> where where are you looking so i can look the same way what are you doing so i can do the same thing because as a little girly myself i get it i get it i promise i get it but i will never get that i will never get that the bounce back yeah, she was definitely a topic of conversation amongst some of our commenters. They just all agreed that she needed to stay far away from Wendy Williams. And she was definitely a leech, a snake in the grass. Um, and I was fooled. You fooled me, girl, because I honestly thought that she was like looking out for Wendy Williams. I didn't know if I could trust her, if I could trust. Wendy's um the other dude that was working with her I forget his name but it was just all shade I only trusted her son really and they had really made him seem a little suspicious too when they were saying he was running through all her money even though he said he had approval it's like did, how how much was she able to approve if you like in her condition and also you know he's the son so I, I guess there's nothing wrong with him using the funds but it's all suspicious. All these stories are just very strange and weird. The Whit the Wendy, the Britney, the Michael Orr, blindside guy, the um Nicki Minaj of it all. Like she's not even in a conservatorship. But it's this toxic circles, man. Like, where are y'all friends? What is going on? Girl, I'm glad I got good friends. Cause this is this is scary. Me too, because it almost makes you, you know what, y'all, I need to know, because we talking about where are your friends, I'm a great, you know what, that's a slogan of mine, where, where are your friends, and, and the people standing next to you, you could be like, I'm here with my, no, baby, I see her, I see her, I still, the question remains the same, where are your friends, so I feel like I'm gonna need y'all to just go ahead and tap in and tell us about a time that you thought you had a good friend but it really wasn't your friend and see why you over there talking about thank god i have good friends uh-oh <laughs> no you didn't Ooh. Ooh, me Woo, chile miss jackson wait is this fucking play about us and I just want to know, you know, when's the last time you thought you had a good friend that wasn't your friend? Because, you know, are we going to be vulnerable here? Is this a safe space? Always. HR is always a safe space. You could tell it here. You could tell it here. You know, we probably... Went through the same thing. We probably had mirrored experiences, actually. Wouldn't you say so? Mm -hmm. I might say something like that. Let's say something like that. You know what? Without without being a cleanup on aisle three, um, we've experienced that. We've experienced that not too long ago. Sometimes you everybody can think differently you know you always have a right to be your own person to be whomever you are some friends are more involved in other friendships um i'm i'm really i'm faking really white i'm faking really because we already know what really did it I if we tell girl. you guys what really did it y'all would gag are we gonna get canceled <laughs> so we gonna get canceled we will keep it cute because if we tell you girls what it really was, it's like I dare you, friend. I dare you to tell them. 
I dare you. No. no. Listen, you want me to do it? I'll do Let me tell you. Let me tell wait, you. Wait, wait, okay? wait, wait. Save it for the end of the episode. Because <laughs> okay. this might be the last thing I ever get to say to y'all. So oh, yeah. You I just really appreciate y'all. <laughs> I appreciate y'all for listening every time. Coming back every week. Um, we love y'all. Y'all are the best. And it's always a good time to get disrespectful. So hopefully we still have our jobs next week and we can come back and tune in again. Okay, girl. Go ahead, drop the bomb. Well, let me go ahead and say my parting words first because the girls love a good cliffhanger moment and I want to make y'all drool for it. So no, we love you, we love you, we love you. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our page. Make sure you follow us on TikTok, follow us on Instagram. We're going to have a Patreon coming out very shortly where you girls can tap in and get to know a little bit more little BTS. But yeah, um, this is our story. I feel like I should be saying like a little bit. We lost our friend because of Miss Queen Diva, the the ultimate it girl. Like, snatch your edges, snatch your wig, snatch your lace, snatch your brain, snatch your brain. (laughs) None other than. (laughs) 